Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As a daughter of Selma, Alabama, and the ranking member of the Election Subcommittee on House Administration, as well as the author of the John Robert Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, ensuring that elections are safe, secure, and accessible is something that I take very deeply personal. Voting is the cornerstone of our democracy, and far too often, the integrity of our elections is undermined by misinformation, false claims, and voter fraud during the election administration process. In the 2020 election, there was no evidence of a voting system being deleted, votes not counting, votes lost, or votes being compromised in any way. A recent study by the Brennan Center revealed that voter fraud is a very rare occurrence. Voter impersonation is virtually non-existent. And the few cases of voter fraud came from mistakes made by the voter or election administrators. Allegations of widespread voter fraud are attempts to distract voters from the implementation of restrictive voter policies that limit access to the ballot box. Contrary to what my Republican colleagues have asserted about the ACE bill being a model for the rest of the nation, the ACE bill is a dangerous policy that would have a severe impact on the rights of voters and on voting rights and access, especially to the District of Columbia. Washington, D.C. has the highest voter registration rate in the nation. D.C. voters can vote early by mail or drop ballot or drop box. Voting in D.C. is accessible to voters with disability and non-speaking and non-English speaking voters. D.C. has implemented pro-voter policies that has made voting very accessible to its residents. Even the conservative Heritage Foundation's election fraud cases database lists zero incidences of voter fraud in the, DC, in, in the District of Columbia since 1979. DC is a model and an example of the implementation of pro-voter policies that the entire nation should look at. However, the ACE bill is egregiously attempting to further disenfranchise D.C. voters by removing proactive voter policies that make their elections some of the most accessible elections in this nation. To be clear, D.C. voters deserve the same right to political self-determination as other Americans. The, D the ACE Act would restrict voter access to D.C.'s hundreds of thousands of voters none of whom have voting representation in this body, Congress. It would do so despite the fact that Congress has long delegated its authority over D.C.'s elections and local governance to the D.C. Council under the D.C. Home Rule Act of 1997, of 1973, sorry. Ms. Weiser, you spoke very eloquently of why it's so important that we give greater voter access. Can you talk a little bit about why prohibiting same-day registration and any registration in the 30 days prior to election would transform not only D.C. voter registration into one of the least accessible, but that would be detrimental to take on as a model? Thank you very much for this question. Um, the same-day registration provision that is in place in D.C. and has been for 10 years is in place in 22 other states. It has been working well, and these are include red states, blue states. It doesn't states. include my state of Alabama, unfortunately, and I know <laughs> that my constituency would love to have more pro-voter policies and better access to the ballot box. Um, indeed. Um, it, it actually um, provides better options for voters to register to vote. It works well. It is secure. And it actually has been shown to significantly improve voter participation, and especially voter participation among um, voters of color who are disproportionately um, voting at much lower rates right now. Not only do I agree with you, 
I would say that what we should be focused on is passing the Freedom to Vote Act and the John Robert Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act and not this ACE bill. Thank you, and I yield the balance of my time.